What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k. Now, for as long as I can remember, Space Marines were almost always regarded as the saviors of humanity, the best of the best, and overall, the Emperor's angels of death. Recently, though, I've been obsessed with the rich lore of the Adepta Sororitas, or better known as the Sisters of Battle. In my readings, I've seen multiple instances of the sisters being more protective of humankind, more tactical in battle, and their reverence of the emperor as a being a god has actually paid off in the miracles that they've been gifted with. But with one thing that I've really enjoyed was their religious theme and just how grim dark you can get with this. Now it's funny to think that the Emperor was trying to crush religion and try to be all about logic and science, and yet these sisters who have prayed to him, he says, you know what, sure, I'll give you some miracles, some gifts for your adoration, and it's just funny how, how that goes. But anyway, this religious theme has been heavily integrated into the rule set of 9th edition. One such example of this that I really enjoy is the Acts of Faith. For there are no warriors more devout in their adoration for the Emperor than the Adeptus Sororitas. It is through and for their faith that they stride into battle against anyone who would oppose the Imperium. Be it Xenos, demons, and even Imperial citizens who have turned away from the Imperial Creed. The Sisters of Battle began as a small fighting force, but they have grown into a massive arm of the Imperium, who have been seen waging war across the galaxy. Where they go, so too goes faith and fire. Now, on the tabletop, this is a powerful ability that allows the Sisters of Battle to make key roles at critical times. Through the use of the Miracle Die, you're able to gain a pool of D6s to use for multiple roles such as charging, making your wounds, making damage, and much, much more. So for example, say you hit and you wound your opponent's Warlord with a multi melta Now instead of ro rolling for damage, you can then substitute that die for one of your pre-rolled Miracle Die. So let's say your opponent only needs four more wounds to go down, and you've already got a miracle die that you rolled with a four. So now you've taken away the whole probability aspect of it, and you're just outright killing him. So this makes a lot of rolls go in your favor for the good and the bad. Now this is game changing. You have many opportunities to gain miracle die with the Sisters of Battle, but if you roll low, that doesn't outright mean that it's bad. Because let's say you have to take a morale test, you got a bunch of ones, just substitute your test for one of the one die, and you'll be okay. Now pair that with a bunch of interactions that you can do with stratagems, and you're already ahead of the game because you're basically playing with more tools available to you than your opponent's army has. Lore-wise, however, the sisters wage war unlike any other. Here's one such example when they went to liberate a world that had fallen to the taint of chaos. The sisters began with a campaign of holy vengeance. Akila Landers drove close to the surface, releasing blessed holy oils that ignited on contact with the air, delivering a blanket of cleansing flame. Then other flyers flew through the planet's clouds, covering the clouds with holy water so that the very atmosphere of Varentia rained holy water onto the planet, sanctifying the very ground itself. Finally, a planet-wide vox was overtaken by the sisters' prayers and hymns. Seraphim squads then descended through the clouds, such that the rays of light created by their descent gave the appearance of being delivered by the God Emperor himself. So there you go. Just when you think that the Grey Knights are the answer to chaos, that's not always the case. The Sisters of Battle can do that and much, much more. Another such example was the last stand on Cadia that happened when Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade vomited forth from the Eye of Terror and crashed into the Cadian system. The War Master's primary objective was the total destruction of the indomitable fortress world, and more importantly, the Necron pylons that had held back the Warp Anomaly for so many millennia. 
Even as a terrible fleet battle raged in Cadia's orbit, the planet's surface was subjected to an invasion on a scale never before seen by its stoic defenders. Although the Imperium desperately mustered every military force it could spare to counter this invasion, few expected to see five commanderies of the Order of Her Martyred Lady arriving alongside none other than Saint Celestine. Once thought lost during their warp translation to the world of Chandri many years earlier, these wayward sisters had been guided by Celestine's divine light, and she led them into the heart of the battle against Abazon's forces. Now the sisters of the Order of Our Martyred Lady fought valiantly, and Celestine herself delivered the Emperor's holy wrath to countless foes. Though against the endless tide of traitor forces hurled against them, there could be no victory. Even as Cadia's valiant defenders fought to the last, Abaddon launched a final, desperate gambit, crashing the Blackstone Fortress, Will of Eternity, into the planet itself to utterly destroy it along with all those who remained on the surface. Now this battle is much more detailed than that, and you can see it on our playlist which covers the fall of Cadia. It is a three-part series that leads up to the resurrection of Gilliman and the introduction of the Primaris Marines. So all in all, I can agree that the Sisters of Battle have a ton of interesting lore. Their rules are pretty competitive, even if their toughness is only three. But that just means that every battle you make has to be that much more tactically sound to make sure you come above and beyond your enemy of the dreaded Primaris Marines. Because, I mean, let's be honest, that's what you're probably going to be fighting against most of the time. And GW loves their Primaris Marines, so it's always going to be an uphill battle. But that makes every victory much more sweeter. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this topic about and talk a little bit about why I like them is because I'm planning on doing a little mini army for them. It's going to be a little bit of conversion work that I'm going to be working on with them because as much that I love the aesthetic of the Sisters of Battle, I hate unhelmeted heads. And even the helmeted heads of the Sisters aren't all that great in my opinion. So I'm going to try and see if I can somehow find either a third party or see if the scald helmeted heads of the space marines can still work with the scale of the smaller sisters to make them look a little bit more intimidating. So essentially it's going to be kind of a female um, Legion of the Damned type army. Um, I'll get into more details with that in another video, but that's kind of what I'm thinking of. So think very religious, very grim dark with skull helmets. And um, I get an idea as to what character or what um, type of... Um, well, I'm not going to say much. <laughs> I'll just say that Morven Val's rules will be used, but lore-wise she will not be Morven Val. But we'll get into that later. For now, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. If you guys have any type of ideas or any other reasons as to how I can create this grim, dark females, sisters of battle, slash Legion of the Damned army, let me know down below. And if you guys do love the Sisters of Battle, let me know what's your favorite thing about them. As always guys, if you want to support us here at One Mind Syndicate, you can always head on over to our Patreon page and just pledge a simple dollar, which honestly really goes a long way in helping us bring you more 40k videos. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Peace.